Welcome to the first of many videos that we'll be looking at together that involve the writing of geometry proofs. So first of all, let's begin by having a little discussion exactly about what a proof is. So a proof is really a carefully organized set of true statements along with the reasons we know those statements to be true. And I'm going to take a minute and write that down just so that we have in our notes exactly what it is that we're trying to accomplish. So it's a carefully written set of true statements along with or in the reasons we know those statements to be true. The proof will always end or conclude with the statement that you're trying to prove. All right, so now that we know what it is and what it's all about, let's go ahead and let's jump right in. Just like we've been doing in our other problems, we're going to always begin by starting by marking the diagram. So the first given tells us that segment AR is perpendicular to segment CB. And recall that perpendicular means forms right angles. So I'm going to go find segments AR and CB in the picture, and I'm going to mark their point of intersection with our symbol for right angles. The second given that we're told is that segment AR bisects angle CAB. And I know that an angle bisector will create or form two congruent angles. So the two congruent angles that are formed by that angle bisector are 1 and 2. And I'm going to go mark them congruent as well. And then I'm going to recall that we have some methods of proving triangles congruent. Side, 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 angle, side, and angle, side, angle. At this point, I only have two pairs of congruent parts. So I'm going to ask myself, can I use the diagram to find some vertical angles? And the answer to that question is no. Can I use the diagram to find some shared sides? And the answer to that question is yes, because I can see in the picture that those triangles both share side AR. And now if I try to apply my congruency um, reasons, the triangles are not congruent by side, side, side. The triangles are not congruent by side, 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 angle, side. However, the triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. So I'm going to begin by writing a little outline or a little plan as to exactly how I'm going to prove these triangles congruent. I'm going to use the first pair of angles, 1 and 2, up at the top of the picture. I'm going to use the shared pair of sides up the middle which I'm going to say that segment AR is congruent to itself, and we'll talk a little bit more about why that's true when we get down to the business of writing about it in the proof. And then the second pair of angles would be the pair formed by the perpendicular lines down at the base of our triangle, so angles 3 and 4. So these are the two pairs of angles and the pair of sides that I'm going to use to make those triangles or to prove or to show why those triangles are going to be congruent. Somewhere in my proof, I'm going to have to have a discussion. I'm going to have to have a true statement saying that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. I know those two angles are congruent to each other because I use this bisector to make them true. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start out by writing about that angle bisector. I'm going to say that angle 1, or I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to say that segment AR bisects angle ABC. My true statement is always going to go inside either a box or a bubble. I'm going to do a little bubble. And my reason that I know that it's to be true goes underneath. I know this is a true statement because I'm told that it's a true statement. It's given to me that it's a true statement. So my reason that goes underneath is that it's a true statement. 
And because segment AR bisects angle CAB, that's how I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So I'm going to draw a little branch off that angle bisector because that angle bisector is what tells me those angles are congruent. It's where that pair of congruent angles comes from. And because that's a pair of angles that I'm going to use to show these triangles are congruent, I'm going to put an A in parentheses. So I know the true statement is that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. That goes inside the bubble. I know the reason that it's true is because that angle bisector creates, forms, makes, however you want to say it, two congruent angles. So if I'm using my outline as a checklist, I'm now going to check off that first pair of angles. That first pair of angles was the first thing I needed to write about in my proof. I've written about it. I've moved on to the next item. The next item says that segment AR is congruent to segment AR. I know that's a true statement because if I look at the picture, I can see that that's a shared side. Segment AR cannot be 6 centimeters in one triangle and 12 centimeters in the other. It's the same exact line segment. So the reason that we have when something is shared between two triangles, such as side AR, it's called the reflexive property. So inside my parentheses goes, sorry, inside my bubble goes the statement that AR is congruent to itself. That is the true statement. I'm going to put a little S in parentheses to indicate that that's a pair of sides in the triangles I'm trying to show congruent. And then my reason here is called the reflexive property. You might want to make a little note to yourself about what the reflexive property is because it's important. We're going to be using it in here a lot this year. The reflexive property just says any segment is congruent to itself or any angle is congruent to itself or any geometric shape is congruent to itself. And again, if I'm thinking about this as my little checklist of things I need to talk about in my proof, I've now talked about that pair of congruent sides. And so now I'm ready to move on to that third item on my checklist. And the third item on my checklist says that angles 3 and 4 are congruent. Well, I can't use given as my reason because it's not given to me. It's not reflexive property. It's not something that's shared. But I started by looking at these perpendicular lines. And those perpendicular lines are what led me to those angles being congruent to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and start another branch in my tree, if you want to think about it like that in my proof. And I'm going to say segments AR and CB are perpendicular to one another. That's my true statement, so it goes inside the bubble. And I know that's a true statement because, again, it's given to me to be a true statement. And based upon my knowledge of geometry, I know that that symbol perpendicular means forms right angles. So because those segments are perpendicular, so I'm going to draw a little branch off this tree, I know that angles 3 and 4 are right angles. That's what it means for something to be perpendicular. It forms right angles. So again, my true statement that goes inside the bubble is that angle 3 and angle 4 are right angles. The reason I know it's true is because those lines are perpendicular. So perpendicular lines form, per perpendicular lines make, perpendicular lines create, however you want to say that. But it's those perpendicular segments that create those right angles. And now, because both of those angles are right angles, from that I can draw a branch and conclude that they must be congruent to each other. Why is that? Well, all right angles measure 90 degrees. So if both of them are right angles, they both must have the same measure. And again, I'm going to put a little A in parentheses because that was the third item from my little checklist that I knew I needed to talk about in order for those, those triangles to be congruent. So inside the bubble goes my true statement. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And underneath the bubble goes the reason. And that's because all right angles are congruent. So at this point, I've talked about my two pairs of angles and my pair of congruent sides. I'm going to bring 
the two pairs of angles and the congruent sides all together. And if I put all three of those together, then I can go ahead and make the conclusion that triangle ACR must be congruent to triangle ABR. And the reason for that is we know those triangles are congruent by angle side angle. So the reason that allows me to conclude that those guys are congruent is by angle side angle. And notice that once I have put the statement that I'm trying to prove inside a bubble along with its reason, I know my proof is finished. My goal here was to show why those two triangles must be congruent. I established the fact that they're congruent by angle side angle, and that's how I know that I'm done. Now, if you understood everything I just talked about, you're way smarter than I was when I was in high school. We're going to be working for weeks and even months on this whole process of writing proofs. So if you're feeling just a little bit dazed and overwhelmed and confused to get right now, that's okay. We'll straighten that around the next time that you come back to class. But in between now and then, what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at this example down at the bottom of the page. I want you to mark the diagram. And I want you to decide whether you're going to prove this congruent by side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle. And then I want you to turn over to the next page, and I want you to do the same thing for those questions on the next page. I want you to mark the diagram, and I want you to decide which method you're going to use to make the triangles congruent. I do not want you to write a proof for any of those. We'll do that together when you come back to class. As always, my deepest thanks and appreciation for the gift of your time and watching the video, and have fun marking those diagrams and deciding on the reasons those triangles are congruent.